Honest, uh, one of the industries and groups of workers uh, in this country, 25,000 of them or so, uh, taxi drivers who have been absolutely uh, crucified by the impact of COVID-19 and public uh, health restrictions and will continue to be as long as other sectors like music, entertainment, events, uh, tourism and aviation are affected on which they depend for their income. Uh, but their appeals for a specific uh, assistance to deal with the debts they're accumulating, their ongoing costs, and for a financial package to help them survive uh, and recover have been consistently refused uh, by this uh, government. Uh, but to add insult to injury, those taxi drivers were planning to come to uh, government buildings this morning at 10 o'clock in a public health compliant protest where they were going to be in their cars and where they had made it absolutely clear they were going to be in their cars so as not to uh, breach public health uh, guidelines. And despite that clear uh, assurance uh, and communicating that to the guards, on Wednesday the representatives of the four national taxi groups, uh, one of them received a call from Pier Street uh, guard station where they were informed that if they turned up in their cars every driver would be fined 100 euro and that the organizers of the protest could face up to 20,000 euro in fines or up to two years uh, imprisonment. Now th this is absolutely shocking and this comes on top of the previous Thursday uh, where uh, the guards uh, facilitated KPMG strike breakers uh, doing non-essential work in non-essential retail, removing stock uh, and physically removing in quite a brutal way mothers and grandmothers uh, who were fighting for fair redundancy. Now, uh, and I could add to that legal threats against ESB workers uh, pursuing a legitimate fight against uh, the outsource of privatization uh, in the ESB, film workers threatened with being uh, fined and arrested uh, a number of weeks ago for protesting uh, or suggesting a protest at the, RD at the RDS. Uh, now I ask you very simply, uh, is it that we actually have one law and one form of policing for workers who are, who are doing public health compliant protests, trying to secure redundancy rights, trying to secure financial assistance for their industries and livelihoods uh, devastated, but on the other hand, the same guards and laws are being used to facilitate KPMG uh, strike breakers. So is it one law for the workers and another law uh, for uh, the strike breakers? Oh, it seems to me that is completely un unacceptable, you, uh, Taoiseach, and I'd ask you uh, to respond to that. Thank you, Deputy Garmagher. Um, thanks, Deputy. There's, there's only one law, and uh, those are the laws that are passed by us, uh, including you, uh, here in these Oireachtas, uh, and uh, the Guardi are responsible for enforcing the laws uh, that we enact uh, here in this Oireachtas, and uh, that's, what, uh, that's what they have to do. Uh, in relation to taxi drivers, um, I, I, I totally acknowledge, and the government acknowledges, that they're among the groups that have suffered the most um, in this pandemic, not in health terms, but certainly uh, in economic terms. Uh, and their business, as we all know, uh, is heavily dependent on tourism, on people uh, attending events, uh, on people availing of hospitality. And as a result of that, uh, they've seen a very major reduction uh, in their incomes. Um, have met them uh, at, your, um, at your suggestion and I'm following up on some of the issues that they raised with Minister Ryan. Um, most are self-employed uh, and as a result of that, uh, can access a range of COVID-19 financial supports, including PUP and the Credit Guarantee Scheme. Uh, and the Department of Transport has waived license fees for 2021 uh, at a cost of 2.6 million. Um, taxi drivers eligible for the PUP um, are also allowed to continue to work and receive the PUP. Uh, there's an income disregard, which allows taxi drivers to earn up to 960 euros every eight weeks net of any expenses without jeopardizing their entitlement to the payment. Uh, this isn't only a crucial lifeline for those who, through no, no fault of their own, uh, cannot work in the way they did before, but will also be an important financial support for drivers uh, once they return to work and until passenger demand returns to more normal levels. Um, um, as I mentioned uh, uh, previously, um, Mr. Ryan uh, has met with 
the taxi representative groups twice last year uh, and understand that officials from the NTA uh, have now been, are now in regular dialogue with groups representing taxi drivers for months now. Uh, the Minister and officials from his department remain available to meet with taxi reps uh, as I would with any lobby group or representative organisation. Uh, and officials have also been engaging with the Advisory Committee on Small Public Service Vehicles uh, and that will be attended by Minister Ryan today, uh, the 29th of April. Minister, first, firstly, taxi drivers have a number of simple demands, none of which have been met. Okay? They've asked for a financial package of supports to cover their fixed costs, which are estimated by the ANT, NTA a number of years ago at €11,000 a year. Debts they are accumulating, there has been, they've been excluded from the schemes uh, to uh, support those fixed uh, costs. Uh, they've asked for a moratorium on the issue of, issuing of licences. Uh, they've asked for uh, the Taxi Advisory Committee uh, to be replaced with a body that allows them direct access uh, to the ministers. Uh, and other demands, uh, many of which are non-financial, including uh, the replacement of the 10-year uh, replacement of vehicle rule with 15 uh, years, given that they've lost their income. Uh, none of those demands have been met, and that's why they were forced uh, to organise a protest uh, this morning, which they've now had to call off because they were threatened, even though they made it clear they were going to comply with public health guidelines, they were threatened with being fined, with implications for the future licensing of their vehicles, and with their leaders possibly uh, facing uh, prison sentences or massive thank, uh, thank fines. You, now, I, I, I ask you, is that an acceptable form of, or is that not, in fact, political thank, policing thank you, uh, against taxi drivers? And the same point, point could be made about what happened to Debenhams workers thank last Thursday. Thank you, Deputy. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. Uh, you know, I could only repeat what I said earlier, and that is, laws are um, passed here by us in these eructus. Uh, there is no law uh, in relation to COVID that didn't come through this house, um, and uh, the Guardian are responsible for for for, um, for, for enforcing the law. Um, and statute instruments can, of course, be revoked uh, by this house, and I've not yet seen. Uh, proposal to revoke any of the statutory instruments that have been put in place uh, since this pandemic began. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Minister Ryan uh, is going to meet with the Advisory Committee on Small Service Public Vehicles today. Uh, that involves some taxi drivers, but also involves consumers and other people uh, who have an interest uh, in the sector and in the industry. Uh, in terms of uh, issuing new licences, um, there is a widespread awareness of the acute difficulties facing the industry today. Uh, and since the pandemic started, the number of licenses issued uh, has declined to a very small number because very few people, understandably, are entering the industry at present. Um, uh, I'm told by the department that, in view of that reality and in view of the fact that a formal halt to the issu issuance of licenses would require legislative change and may be anti competitive, um, the Thank Minister doesn't you. see Thank how a formal mor moratorium would deliver any real benefits to anyone at this Thank stage. You,